Let's get more Rizuru Cut content. This is from Mr. Asaratha HS. Reinhard versus Sirius. Episode 2 analysis cut content. Give it to me, Mr. Asaratha. Of the iceberg when it comes to action. Episode 2 is here, and we get the tip of the iceberg when it comes to action for this arc. Starting with Sirius vs. Subaru, moving to Sirius vs. Reinhard, and then ending off with the bombastic Emilia vs. Sirius. Bombastic. Sirius is clearly... That fight scene, bro, Amelia vs. Sirius went crazy. The animation was so insane. I couldn't even realize or appreciate that Amelia was switching between so many different ice weapons, bro. Got some hands, but to start this episode, we begin with the immediate aftermath of Subaru's first loop after Luzbolt is thrown off the tower, with Betty and Amelia reassuring him as he kind of has to remember how to act after returning by death. Remember, it's been a year, yep. and he has to think of how to act naturally again after a year of not dying. And then it's also like the realization that he just cheered on a child to die from jumping off a rooftop. Remember, dropped off a rooftop, right? He just realizes all of that as he returns by death. Subaru can't help but reference thank you and I'm sorry, showing that one singular encounter with Sirius was more than enough to burn directly into his head. And the f She keeps spamming that. Thank you, I'm sorry. Thank you, I'm sorry. Why does she do that? What? What would make a person keep saying that that associates with like wrath and madness? Thank you, I'm sorry. Thank you, I'm sorry. Phrase overall is a great reference to Amelia's talks with Subaru about saying thank you instead of being sorry. I guess we can also talk about the elephant in the room. True! There's a lot of moments in season one where, actually there's only one, and then a moment where it pays off, where it's just like, Amelia does something and Subaru says sorry rather than saying thank you, and, Subaru, and then Amelia says, you know, a thank you is better than like a thousand stars or something Then he learns from that later on. That did kind of get mixed up with uh, Fortunate Shit. Maybe, and maybe Fortunate... <laughs> Fortunate Serious Theory, right? Maybe Fortunate is the one that told Amelia all that stuff, taught her how to, you know, all about that logic. And now Sirius is saying thank you, I'm sorry. I don't know. The room with this, since anime only picked up on this faster than I expected. Is Sirius Fortuna? Well, yeah. we don't know. There are some very clear... We will never know until it's directly fucking confirmed by having the bands wrapped off and maybe Sirius herself saying it, right? But of all evidences laid out, Romani Conti, Betrigus, in, in fits of Romani Conti, we, we also know, like, I was thinking, could this be Fortuna and Bejuice's son? No. Spirits cannot have children or have parents. They're just kind of like this, like, existing thing. Hair color, eyes, ear color, sorry. Hair color, eye color, ear. Everything matches up. The wound around her eye, it looks like it's burnt, like it's frost burn, because Amelia froze everything, right? And we didn't see Fortuna when Puck basically saved Amelia. I don't know where Fortuna's body went. Maybe Pandora picked it up. Fortuna also literally is like paralleling everything. Sorry, Sirius is paralleling everything that Fortuna says, right? Going out to just like shit on Amelia for every quality that Fortuna deemed to be pretty and admirable. What else is there? Um, I mean, at this point, literally, like, Fortuna saying, like, you're a homewrecker, my husband, Betrigus, you killed him, right? Everything seems to be positioning Sirius to be Fortuna, but nothing can ever be confirmed by the show until the show literally confirms it. Signs that may point to it, mainly her hair color, the appearance of her eyes, and the fact that her appearance is obscured. Of course, this doesn't always mean that... And even if the voice actors are different, it doesn't matter. Now, if the voice actor is the same, then we could do a little bit of meta research and be like, yep, we got him. But even if it's different, that does not disprove or prove anything. Character is the same as another, but it's definitely something to keep in the back of your mind as the series goes on. Novel readers were fully ready for her to have the same voice actor as Fortuna, mm. but it seems that that's where they diverged. Well, if novel readers are ready for Fortuna to have the same voice actor as Sirius, aren't you just spoiling this for me right now? Why would you say that, right? Why would, why would novel readers expect it? Because novel readers know it. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? Let's also briefly touch on Sirius's name. Okay. She's named after a star in the real world that sits in Cat's Orion. Major. Orion. Orion. Posting, you can find it a couple of hours before sunrise in the Northern Hemisphere. And it sits below the Orion constellation. Yeah, Betrigus, Rigel. Rigel is the name of Subaru's summit rem in the Glu Sloth route. No matter how light Pluto your area is, because Sirius is the brightest star in the sky. A fitting observation I make given her fiery showing in this episode. Notably... And fire, right? If we're going to parallel Fortuna shit, 
Not only that, the magic even makes sense. The fact that Sirius and Fortuna has the same magic. Yeah, it's fire, but it's temperature magic. You take away the heat, it becomes ice. You add the heat, it becomes fire. Fortuna and Sirius is supposed to be kind of opposites right now, right? Sirius shitting on Amelia for all the half-elf qualities that Fortuna fucking loved. There's a lot of these like opposite parallels happening. Sirius is referred to as the Dog Star because of its prominence in its constellation, dog? which is known in English as the Dog Star. Do we know anything about dogs and Re Zero and how this relates to Sirius and Fortuna? Mm, no, there isn't. Greater dog. It was frequently confused as a red star being placed in the same category as Mars and Antares, though the star is actually a bluish white. Perhaps being used in Re Zero as a reference to how fire magic can both be ice and fire, but you know mm. that is probably a stretch. I like that stretch. I appreciate that he made that connection. I love people reaching and doing mental gymnastics to make the, the story kind of make sense. I am so down for this. Sirius was the faithful dog of Orion, the constellation that Petalgeus was supposed to represent. The star Betelgeuse being the hand of Orion, and when Orion was killed by the scorpion sent by Gaia and turned into a constellation, Sirius, the dog star, would follow him into the heavens. There is also another story in Greek mythology about Sirius burning brighter than ever before, scorching any mortals She's that burning, approach, all right. pleading with the gods due to the fact that Sirius could not be with their lover, Opora. The and Opora right there is Betelgeuse, right? So even like the constellation, like lore it, it literally matches what Sirius is going through Dogstar put Subaru into his shortest loop so far giving him just a 10 to 15 minute window to make things happen putting yep. the pressure onto a level never before seen in ReZero Subaru rushes back to the square and unfortunately we have a pretty massive cut for this loop which we can touch on later but this basically ends up holy shit this frame is sad what the fuck is that face With Subaru rushing to save Lost Bowl, but getting jumped by Sirius Sirius versus Subaru, if you can really call it that, ensues, and I know that a lot of people might feel some type of way about this. There's a group of people who want Subaru to be this Omega badass who can take on anything and everything, but unfortunately... No, I think that this is the most logical outcome, that he tried by himself and he got fucking clapped up by an Archbishop's powers. You expect Subaru to just like clutch what you think is using his whip? Nah, this dude is casual as fuck. He ain't got no, like, special things beyond Return by Death and Invisible Providence. Actually, there's a lot of special things he has. But it's hard for him to be competent like Reinhardt in a 1v1. Him just getting just decimated in the first loop immediately, I thought was very fitting and kind of sets the stage of like, yup, this is an Archbishop, all right, and we're fucked. He's just not that guy, and he might never be. Subaru's character is not one of power, but he- Subaru doesn't need to be that guy, because he collects those guys. Wilhelm literally said, last episode, Subaru, you're such an amazing person. No matter what, you always figure out a way to solve the problem by uniting other people and gathering them around you. And Subaru's like, well, I'm a weak piece of shit that's, you know, useless and incompetent. And, and then Wilhelm is like, yes, indeed. And that's what I love about you. Subaru isn't going to do things by himself. That's not what the story's about. In fact, the story actively teaches you that... Having this pride and arrogance of trying to do everything by yourself to prove your worth is actively harming him. It's counterproductive. It's when he throws that shit aside, humbles himself, collects people that he needs to work for him. That's when everything goes great. He is a leader and a strategist, not like an OP knight in a 1v1. Even despite that, he puts that aside to climb up that tower to try to save Lusbo, which I find a hell of a lot more inspiring given that he cannot go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a Sin Archbishop. As the encounter goes on, Subaru can feel the fear and pain of Luzbol's being tossed over the railing and choking to death on his own fear with an extremely well-executed and gory scene that might mm -hmm. be one of the hardest deaths to watch in the series. That was pretty nuts, man. It w and the fingers getting sliced off like hot dogs when he reached for his neck, but the thorn chain thing cut it off crazy. I'm also expecting a death that's going to be very... Maybe it won't be gory, but it's going to be, like, horrific terrifying when he drowns i fully expect a death by drowning to happen because pristella is supposed to be this like water-like city where water levels rise and go down tape for sure is going to figure out a way to make subaru die by drowning and make it so graphic i'm sure if that ever happened like the web novel or the light novel would go into such detail trying to describe what drowning feels like and we get subaru considering the state of mental collapse he was under and piecing together her resonance 
Given what we saw from her power last week and with what just happened, it's safe to say that her power can connect people in multiple regards, mm -hmm. whether it be emotional states or physical pain, which is a power that fits strongly into the ideology of hers we discussed last video. Her idea of pure love being one of joining hearts and hearts minds. Hearts are one. Subaru thinks of Reinhardt and then rushes to Ratchens and convinces him to call him over, and even Reinhardt states that if he isn't careful, he too could succumb to the effects of her authority. Did he say that? I thought I, I didn't catch that. He just casually dispelled the authority between Ratchets and Subaru though. Ratchets did eventually get back into the group mindset, but Reinhardt, I don't know what he did. Maybe he has a divine protection that's, you know, very useful against like these kind of mental deep of authorities. Though who knows if that's just Reinhardt being his humble self again. He states that it isn't just seeing or hearing her, but even perhaps just knowing that she exists can trigger her authority. Knowing that she exists can trigger the authority if you're even thinking about her? What the fuck? And this is when we get our second action sequence of the episode with Sirius versus Reinhard with probably some of the best animation work the series has seen, mm -hmm. as Sirius gets tossed around like a ragdoll. Subaru snaps out of Wrath's authority to go up and save Luzbul, our goat still thinking about the lives that can be saved, as the crowd's anger is emboldened by Sirius' flames and they chant kill, 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 and to nobody's surprise, Reinhard beats Sirius. The encounter but. that everyone assumed could just be solved by Reinhardt, however, gets an interesting new layer added onto it. If we call in Reinhardt to instant kill Sirius, everyone in the vicinity will die with her. If we do this again, but now we have this knowledge, we can let Reinhardt know to maybe take Sirius somewhere else, far, far away. Now, this is an assumption. We're assuming that the proximity of Sirius and the people that's under the authority if we push her far away, maybe it's going to not be affected. Like, why did Sirius get kicked around by Reinhardt in the sky when they were fighting, but no one else took share of damage? Is it a mental toggle on and off situation, or is it a distance limitation? Her. Sirius's idea of love has manifested entirely through her authority, linking one's heart, one's mind, and one's body together. If Reinhardt is not going to be able to carry the cast of victory in the city, what do you guys think the plan is going to be going forward? Let I don't know. I mean, we have Julius. Right? But maybe that's not the right time to call Yulius. I think that Liliana is going to be integral to this. I think that we should bring Lily, Liliana and Reinhardt. If Reinhardt can simply be serious right over here, we need Liliana. And this is an assumption. I feel like her song will break people out of that trance-like state from the authority. Something about it, about her music, should be able to wake them up. And I expect Liliana to be very important to beat serious. Let me know in the comments below. And just a reminder, novel readers, comments, trying to spoil people will be removed. We loop again, and this time Subaru opts to bring Betty with him, and nobody else, something Priscilla takes clear note of. Mm -hmm. He info dumps to Beatrice, asking her to just trust him, that Wrath is here, and how Wrath works. We also learn another reason why- That was kind of nice that Betty didn't, like, ask Subaru questions anymore, because she's like, okay, you're limited, I understand. Sure, she's like, diehard, she doesn't need, like, complete, like, proof or something, because she has complete faith in Subaru. So it's nice to see other people just kind of believe him without being like suspicious like back in season one. Reinhardt can't come and fight because if he does, all of the mana will be redirected back to him and Beatrice won't be able to do anything. We actually That's right, which implies that during the fight between Reinhardt and Sirius, Sirius couldn't use her magic. It's not that she wasn't using her magic. She can't use her magic. If, if Reinhardt exists, mana literally obeys him. Right? So, Reinhardt versus a magician is not even fucking fair. Like, the only way to beat Reinhardt then is to be another swordsman. Because you as a magician, Reinhardt closes the distance, or who knows how uh, much of a range, you know, is that whole mana bending property. But if Reinhardt's in your face, you're fucked. You can't use any magic. Therefore, you gotta beat him in martial arts then? I actually knew this already. Back in Arc 1, or the first few episodes, Emilia couldn't use healing magic while Reinhardt was charging an attack, so they had to take turns. So they'll just have to solve this with just the two of them, or so they think, because Priscilla inspired Amelia to follow them to the town square. The plan was to use Shamak to disconnect her authority, but it's a- We- we jinxed it. Super when he said, don't disrespect Shamak like that. When he's right, Shamak has come clutch so many times. But, uh, yeah, the Shamak was an assumption that we thought would work on the authority, but actually, the authority is- Nothing like what we imagined, and Betty kind of does an explanation. Complete flop, so Emilia goes on the offensive and unleashes a massive ice attack on Sirius, which makes her absolutely furious, accusing Emilia of killing her husband Petalgeus Four. and attacking her half-elf status because she has not looked in a mirror. Sirius pegs Emilia- True. 
I mean, Sirius is not a half elf, but she definitely is an elf, right? If we assume Sirius is Fortuna. It's funny that, like, she's calling, like, what the fuck? You are literally shitting on a girl of her elf like features when you are a literal fucking elf. But she's wrapped up. She's all band aided up. So I, I don't know. Dude, that's actually really funny. You should look in the mirror. Leo for Petalgeuse is death, which makes sense considering the achievement went to her camp and not just Super in particular. As she comes out wielding flames, showing us she also has fire magic. Another Fortuna. Fire magic is again temperature magic, which is ice magic, which is Fortuna. Point, I suppose. Subaru can't help but note how different she is from previous loops upon seeing Amelia, and calls Sirius a morally bankrupt person trying to impose her pet theories on the ordinary. We get to see Amelia really go all out, which is something we have really never- This is the scene, right? That was constantly shown in the cover pictures as well. Holy shit, these jugs. We got to see that often in the anime. And it's super cool how she utilizes Dual her wielding. brand arts, which we have now seen more in the anime than in the actual novel illustrations. Hi. And we get further payoff for Arc 4 as Emilia is not made depressed by Sirius attacking her appearance, but angered, as the person she thought was the coolest woman in the world had the same characteristics. Something that- And that's so sad, because if it's the same person, it's literally the opposite. She cherished all the half-elf features before, but now- she is shitting on it also. Look at these tonfas, man. The weapons keep changing. That was once a source of shame for her, now empowers her to battle Sirius. Subaru and Betty use a gravity manipulation spell to jump up to the top of the tower Hype. to save Luzbul until Sirius pulls out her trump card. We always- Where did Tina show up from? Okay, I was paying attention to the scene a lot. She appeared out of nowhere, right? Sirius is down on the ground. Tina is nowhere to be seen. Sirius- I think uses some sort of like fire magic at that point, right? Everything is like burning around. Then Tina appears. What the fuck? She just knew that there were two children. And here she is. She's using Tina as leverage. And someone takes advantage of that moment of weakness from Amelia. Regulus Corneus finally debuts after his brief appearance in episode 1 to take Amelia to make her his 79. 79. Wife, the exact same number that Regulus wanted to use on Fortuna back in Arc 4. He wanted to take Fortuna as his wife? I didn't even know. Really? I, th I thought he was just showing up around with Pandora because Pandora wanted to show him something, but he wanted Fortuna to be his wife back then, huh? Why not serious though? Why not serious? Is she wrapped up in her vans? Overall, an incredibly action-packed episode, and funnily enough, this won't even be the most action this season. Yeah, this is a low-priority episode, guys. This is not, like, the episode yet. That's crazy. We get some great characterization from Subaru, who, despite refusing to make sacrifices... Also, that's, uh, very... Well, when you say 79, it's not the 79th wife. It's the currently... Of all the alive wives, it's the 79th, right? Right? Because he actually has hundreds of wives, but there's only like 78 alive, I think. And he wanted the 79th alive wife to be Fortuna. That was like a couple, that's like a hundred and something years ago. And during that century and a bit, maybe he did take on more wives, but maybe they did die. I'm not sure. It's supposed to be slot number 79, but it came empty? You can just do that? Why does the number 79 matter to Regulus? Huh. Why would he give such emphasis on the number 79? But what is 79? Is 79 a prime number? It, it is, right? Is 79 a prime number? Yeah, it is. It's only divisible by 1 in the 79 itself. It's also an odd number. It's a prime number. Seven nine, seven, seven sins, seven witches, seven arc. There's only six though. Ugh. Seven nine, nine and seven. I don't know. I, I don't, I don't know why the seventy nine is so specific here. Has still learned from arc four and is not resetting every time something goes wrong, and a great furthering of Amelia's newfound confidence. I'm going to talk briefly about my thoughts on the adaptation and then jump into the cut content. This week's okay. adaptation was solid. I think I was mostly hit by the whiplash of how fast these two loops go, because they're not that quick in the novel. I loved it. I love how we just kept failing over and over again. It was like, oh shit, what do we do? Fuck, we fucked up. All right, go back into it. Oh no, we got cooked again. I loved it. It kind of left me off in a weird footing. However, Subaru's first death with this episode was incredibly good. 
really good animation and extremely unsettling adaptation, with some great voice work as usual by Subaru, and I love how they adapted the large paragraph of fear coming from Subaru as he died. Jesus. The Reinhardt death. What the hell is this at the end here? Do you see this? Was fine. Uh, I must agree that the direction is a bit lacking, and due to the rapid pacing of the episode, it doesn't hit as hard as it could have, but it was fine. Where this episode really stands out is the second half, Amelia with fights. Subaru's third loop, and Amelia vs. Sirius. I said that Sirius vs. Reinhardt has the best action animation of the series, and then it gets one-upped by this next fight. Amelia's fight was stunning, and the sound effects were even so cute. It got a little distracting, but it was funny. Incredibly smooth while still being extremely weighty, and some cool shots throughout this entire fight. The only thing I could complain about are these really weird sound effects that sound super dampened, like they're- Hey! But not those sound effects? What other sound effects? These really weird sound effects that sound super dampened, like they're playing in a room with sound absorbing foam. This is the episode we- Oh, like the clash of the weapons. I get it. We also got the opening and ending, and I won't speak too much on them lest this video get too long, though I can't help but find the opening very lacking. There was never really any point- Opening was lacking? Well, the opening meant to serve as fake spoilers, right? It was lacking? That it impressed me, maybe outside of that Priscilla shot. The ending, however, is far better with some fan- Yeah, people really love the ending more than the opening. Fantastic direction, a great art style throughout, and some good animation. Overall, this episode was good. Character art was on point, backgrounds were gorgeous as usual, yeah. and it has some of ReZero's best action and fight scenes so far. I yes, think sir. The pacing suffered quite significantly, however, and hopefully when we make it out of Volume 17 territory, we can slow down a bit and we can let the chapters breathe. Though I do think that the next two episodes might suffer from a similar pacing issue. Uh -oh. That's about it. Let's get into cut content. The juicy part. Here we go. The cut content. What did the anime not show us in this Subaru frame? is so fucking funny to me. There was a memory of Subaru's that was cut from this episode, unfortunately, but during a period where Subaru is self-reflecting about Sirius' mm -hmm. authority and returned by death, he thinks about the year time skip, mainly okay. when he was getting to know Beatrice more and more. We learn explicitly that despite knowing about the taboo, Subaru tried repeatedly to inform Beatrice of return by death, but every time was met with that heart-gripping pain. Okay. It's a good moment that shows that despite what Subaru has endured from the taboo, he's still trying to let those close to him in, especially Betty. During the first loop when Subaru dies of fear, Subaru doesn't just show up at Luzbol. There's a long scene of him running back to the square, thinking about all the ways he can create diversions, and what is significantly different is that when he enters the tower, Sirius is inside as well, speaking with the boy. This is when Subaru gets to use his whip outside of just traversal, what? like he does at the end of the episode. I wanted to see the whip fight! This whip is gonna become so important, man. Maybe the whip is a true counter to Regulus. Imagine something about this whip's property counters Regulus's authority. That would be so fucking funny. There's also cut information about this whip. Uh, it is made from material gathered from the Guilty Low that showed Ooh. up at the Roswell Mansion at the end of Arc 4. Guilty Low Man? It is dubbed the Guilty Whip. It's, it's the Guilty Whip. That's cool lore. All right. So we have, it's not on the three witch beast calamity tier, you know, uh, mob beast, but it's right beneath that, right? This is one of the most formidable uh, witch fiends and we have taken its materials and made it into a whip. There is some great narration about how a whip is a weapon for people without strength, and for people like Subaru, who rely on having a bag of tricks to out- I didn't know. Whips are supposed to be for people that doesn't have strength? ...with their opponent. Subaru uses the guilty whip against Sirius, and tackles her out of the tower, causing her to plummet to the ground. What?! It was a nice moment of comp- He tackled her out of the tower?! Subaru actually used the whip and kind of like, won in a little skirmish, and- and, 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 and she got tackled out of the tower. Like she fell off the tower? I, 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 what's the imagery here? I didn't see that I enjoyed from Subaru. Uh, this is when he tries to save Luzbo, but runs into issues of fear from the Wrath Authority and is then killed by Sirius. Okay. Uh, another note is that Subaru notes this authority as soul washing, which is removed. Here's the Chuni name for uh, Sirius's authority. Authority of Wrath. Soul washing. From the anime. There is a cut conversation between Sirius and Reinhardt that I was hoping would make it in because I really like it. Mm -hmm. Basically, Sirius rejoices that the Sword Saint has come to the square and calls him the man most loved by the world and the man that loves everyone. We can obviously make it clear, however. The man most loved by the world is didn't get accepted by the element affinities in the mana because he can use it all? I don't know. That whether or not this is true, what it ignores is Reinhardt's own self-love. He has very low self-confidence, wondering if he is worthy of his own title. And yeah, that's a very interesting with Reinhardt, especially highlighted in episode one with the conversation with Heinkel. You would think that the Von Austria family 
are just perfect beings that have nothing, no flaws. But actually, even as someone as strong as Reinhardt, he has a lot of doubts about himself, specifically with like Heinkel and the family drama and the Astria assets. And that's why he always like is, his like self-respect or self-dignity, right? It, it doesn't seem to be on the same caliber of like the confidence and the strength that he wields and felt is going to be integral to that development. An aspect of love that is ignored by Sirius' ideology. Does everyone love Reinhard? Probably not. Does Reinhard love everyone? Who knows? Maybe. Lofty assumptions to make about someone without knowing them. That is going to wrap up episode 2, however. We should have about two episodes left of volume 17, and then we move into the final volume this core will cover. Let's go. Let me know what you guys think about the episode in the comments below. As an anime only, I didn't even realize that the opening was lacking, nor was the episode, like, quote-unquote, not as fulfilling. Like, to me, it was just such a peak episode. Maybe I have such a bias for ReZero that I can't even, like, break out of my glazing trance-like state and objectively see the direction of the episode, but I thought it was a pretty fucking amazing episode regardless. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked Yes, I did. Please go give Mr. Atharatha a like on the video. Check out his channel if you haven't. Here is the link, guys, and I'll see you next time.